Hello everyone, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Day Tripper Hobbs. I hope you guys have had a wonderful week because we've got something exciting coming up for all of you. No, it's not the awesome plants that are in my car right now. No, it is something more exciting. Uh, it is going to be a clips episode. Yeah, um, this early on, Eclipse episode, I know. Uh, as you may notice from my car, I can't see how much you can tell uh, from here, but my car is full to capacity right now because I needed to buy some things for an event that we've got coming up, and also I've got to buy some things for my house uh, to make it a little more livable. So right now I can't do shopping as much this weekend and go on a cool adventure, but uh, as one always does in the uh, most boring of times, because I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a big shopper, um, you got to go out and do something exciting. So what I'm gonna do right now is uh, I'm gonna do a little shopping. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a conversation I had with my brother, uh, the winner. And then afterwards, uh, we are gonna go on a little bit of a trip. Uh, I wanna do some geocaching with you all. Uh, geocaching, if you haven't done it before, is really awesome. I'll talk to you about it, what it is in a second. Basically, modern day treasure hunting in the middle of the city. Yeah, we're gonna do that mostly so I don't go crazy from shopping. So here we go, onwards to the other thing. <laughs> so I'm going nowhere. And if I stay, and I maybe it's time to move on. Ah, Glen Yarborough. You know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Glen Yarborough's work. Uh, I uh, used the uh, 70s uh, Rankin Bass uh, Hobbit movie as a gateway drug. But now I love that weird Kruger man. Um, it's got some good stuff. I mean, I only know like three of his songs, but they are dope. I love them. Uh, also, the Hobbit soundtrack, the uh, entire soundtrack was pretty much done by Glenn Yarbrough himself. Um, yeah, he's just like a, a crooner dude from the 70s. Um, he had a really wobbly voice, real cool dude, but he uh, he wrote the whole thing, so if you've ever seen it or you want to see it again, uh, he's the dude who does the music, and I've always loved that stuff. I don't know why I love that movie so much. Um, like, I was watching it again the other day, and there are some, like, perfectly beautiful things. I wish that the new movie had done. But then there was, like, some also, like, super creepy things. Like, Gollum's Cave was, like, 500% more creepy than the new movies ever could dream of being. Granted, that's because they were also trying to make Gollum like uh, sympathetic, so it would connect a little bit more to the Lord of the Rings movies. But, holy crap, man. I uh, I used to, like, <laughs> the reason I got into, like, uh, those, the, that one of the movies, but that one particular movie was that my, my siblings got super scared whenever I watched it. Um, and so I, you know, I first got it a bunch of times just to be like, huh, I'm not afraid, but you are. Um, and then, uh, you know, it just turned into a, a love of all things, uh, Tolkien-y. Well, okay, at first it was like, I, I was not going to read anything except for The Hobbit. I read it over and over again. But I, I saw like five minutes of the, uh, what's-his-face, Lord of the Rings cartoon. Um, and I was like, no, no, Frodo can't be the bad guy. That doesn't happen. I mean, now Bilbo can't be a bad guy. He, that that's not that's not how it works and so yeah I, until uh, PDJ came out I didn't actually watch or read any of them and then I you know read them really quick um, anywho there we go I <laughs> it's a very long-winded talk about uh, my man Glenn Yarbrough do I know anything about him no but uh, do I know that baby the rain must fall or you know that it's time to move on baby um, someday some old familiar rain will come along and know my name. It's, uh, I, I don't know anything else about it except for like, I think those are the only three songs I know. Um, yeah. All right. Well, after some shopping and a really quick costume change, I'm back. Hopefully you guys had a good time with my weirdo conversation. Um, so, geocaching. I don't know if you guys have ever heard about it before, but it is amazing. Basically, modern day treasure hunting in the middle of town or out in the country, wherever you may be. So back in the day, um, back in college, uh, me and my buddy um, used to go out and uh, we'd you know, grab a couple friends and we'd go out, um, often with people we didn't know very well, and you know, go do some geocaching uh, in the evenings. Ton of fun, 
it's actually kind of a nice way to break the ice. Um, and so that's what we're going to do today. Um, I am here in town. It's kind of a nice little break from shopping and doing everything else I was doing. So, got a phone app here. Um, so it's called geocaching, um, just like what the sport is. Uh, very easy stuff. And uh, we're just going to go find out something here nearby. So many of you might ask, why is this fun? Why is this cool? I got a GPS on my phone. It takes me places. That's boring. Um, and I would say unto that, au contraire, mon frere. Uh, this is actually pretty amazing stuff. So um, it's going to take us... Uh, to where we want to be, but it's going to be within probably about 15 feet of where the actual treasure is. And uh, the treasure could be a bunch of different things, I believe. I need to look on the details. This one is probably a micro cache. Uh, I think you have to actually pay a premium to get the bigger caches. Um, micro caches are usually, you know, this big, and uh, they got a little scroll of paper inside of them, and um, not much else. You just write your name on it. The uh, bigger caches. Uh, they are, it depends on the size. A lot of them I see are, you know, uh, old ammo boxes. Some people can be real jerkish when it comes to hiding geocaches sometimes. Uh, there was one of them uh, that uh, we were looking at uh, just outside the wilds of Logan, Utah. And uh, it seemed to us like it was, it couldn't have been anywhere except for under, in the underside of a bridge in the middle of a marsh. And we weren't in for that, so uh, we didn't feel like, you know, getting in the water like that much, so, you know, didn't go there. But uh, most of them are usually pretty good. Um, city caching can be a little bit different than country caching. Um, you know, when you're geocaching in the city, um, sometimes there's limited places for people to hide stuff, so it might not be as exciting. Um, but there's going to be more of them, so it's kind of a trade-off. Um, you know, if it's in a parking lot in the city, for instance, you might not be able, I mean, you might be able to find it easily because if it's just in a parking lot, there's honestly a real high chance that it's actually just going to be uh, in the lamppost because that's the only place you can hide it. Um, but it could be all, all sorts of anywhere. All right, and we're back at the parkway. Yeah. You guys may recognize this from that one time that uh, me and Winter came here and we were talking about it, ABBA. Yep, um, well, so it's gonna be down this here road, it looks like. Couldn't really pull off, but uh, we're gonna check it out. It's gonna be over by the bridge, I think. Okay, so as you can see, I am really close to where this is. So it's probably gonna be somewhere within 10, 15 feet of me. This isn't like 100% accurate, which is actually part of the fun. So. Um, take a quick look around where I'm at. Um, kind of just look for obvious hiding places. Now, my first guesses would be probably near the base of one of these stones. Probably inside this pole, which would suck. Um, maybe next to one of these rocks over here. Nope, that's just a back of thing. Or, ooh, ooh. Oh, <laughs> you see that? That is a catch. Here, put something out of my hand here. It's... Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like there's a big spider. It's going to eat my hand or something. Come on. Uh -huh. There it is. official list here and then people who have been here but there you go if you guys are ever looking for something to do you got like 10 15 minutes pull up your phone put it after you got the app on there just pull up your phone find some place have some fun there you go uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed my rant about Glenn Yarborough and uh, how great he is and got to see a little bit of geocaching remember to do all the cool YouTube stuff and uh, we will see you guys next week have a great time